Bring him out. I'll tell you. I'm a lot happier. I just stole him through the cheese factory with Lorraine. Well, then why'd you break up with her? The fly is wide open. Stuff causes hazardous driving conditions for motorists in Lee County. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Rwanda. <laughs> Tonight. It's All-Star TV Sensor Bloopers. Unplugged. With your host, Dick Clark. And special guest, David Hasselhoff with outtakes from Baywatch Nights. Tim Conway. With bloopers from the news. And more. Plus bloopers from Caroline in the City. Coach. Frazier. Islander. In the house. Jag. Mad about you. Pursuit of happiness. Wings. And your favorite soap operas. Plus classic bloopers from Laverne and Shirley. And all-star bloopers featuring Sandra Bernhardt, Lisa Gibbons, Rush Limbaugh, Bill Maher, Howie Mandel, Burt Reynolds, John Ritter, Geraldo Rivera, Sinbad, and much, much more. And now, here is the host of Bloopers, Dick Clark. All right. Good evening, and uh, welcome to the latest all-star edition of our show. Now, tonight... The show is called TV Censored Bloopers Unplugged. Now, in music, of course, unplugged means natural music in its pure form without uh, any of those studio gimmicks or any of that stuff. And tonight, you're going to see your favorite shows in their purest form, you know, before they go into the editing room and make everything perfect. Like this first blooper from Fraser. Take a look. <laughs> you bought a Stardust pistol? Yes. You see, as long as Maris thinks it's real, it makes her feel secure. But this way, nothing, no one can... Wait, let me trade again. <laughs> All right. Uh, Crystal Bernard's job in the scene is to deliver a punchline, then exit with a cake. 101 ways to pleasure a woman. Well, thank you, Brian, but I don't think I'll have much use for this. Good, then give it to Joe. Now, here's some trouble with cards. Oh, it, it uh, flipped over the wrong way. <laughs> Try to be cool. Look what happens. Okay, hit me. Oh, sorry. He says action, then we do our job. <laughs> okay, hit me. Hit me again. Now, Malcolm Getz is supposed to say, if I hold her down, will you shove a giant Valium down her throat? On the floor! What are you doing? What is she doing? I don't know. But if I hold her down, will you shove a giant... Diaphragm down her throat? I'm going to PTA and clean out the clothes trap in my lint dryer. <laughs> Catalog. Now listen to little Clark Duke try to say braziers and girdles. Yeah, it's no big deal to us. They've got brazars and girdles and everything. Now let's see, Marcy Post is supposed to say her loins are girded. Francesca's grandmother, a proud and hard-bodied mistress to the Grand Archduke, is primed for childbirth. Her girds... <laughs> <laughs> this take the audience is way ahead of Marky. Antonio, who was Francesca's father and a founder of the first... Wait, what happened to the grandmother? She gave birth to Antonio, who was Francesca's mother, 
<laughs> what happened to the grandmother? She gave birth to Antonio, who was Francesca's father and one of the founders of the first Club Med. Hey, congratulations, Marky. We knew you could do it. You know, the hit series Mad About You seems to uh, grow in stature year after year, and I guess that's because Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt are the perfect TV couple. They have perfect chemistry, perfect timing, perfect delivery of their lines. There's a little break from all of that perfection. That's not the point. I already, I already told Bob no. Well, so we'll tell Bob yes. No, I, I don't like yanking Bob around like that. <laughs> what else has he got to do? Oh, well, Bob? You know, Murray. He's, Murray's got plenty to do. <laughs> I've screwed this up so royally that I'd like to start again. Bye-bye. <laughs> alienated my entire family. Well, then somebody had to do it. Why? Why did you take your Uncle Van? Why did you take the pate? Because I just forgot why. I'm going to go back to that. <laughs> but I had a damn good reason. I know that. I check it. Here's the thing. Um... I don't even know, really, um, exactly what I say here. <laughs> now, here's a highly charged dramatic scene from the NBC series Jag. The actors are David James Elliott, Andrea Parker, and David Giannopoulos. Now, watch how the scene builds in intensity. Rab, sir, you haven't legally established any rules of engagement. I'm establishing them now. When fired upon, fire back. We've not made contact with the escapees nor negotiated with them. They're firing, damn it! Not at us! The chopper can stand down. Once it does, they're no longer a clear or present threat to... Ah! <laughs> Anybody but somebody, I don't know what. He's Why? Right. Why? A lot of people have fancy Now here's Sinbad on location on the beautiful island of, uh, well, let's let him tell Ever since I saw Flipper as a kid, my life changed. I lived with the fish, I ate fish, I bought minnows. I used to jump in the aquarium with them. And what better place than here, in the middle of... I don't know where this is at. Where is that? What was that? Harold bet Graham 50 bucks that you would tell her to marry Now here are Melinda McGraw and, and Tom Amandas in a scene about a $50 bet. Graham told me everything. But don't be mad at her in her own weird little way. She was trying to defend you. They put me through this for 50 bucks? <laughs> well, it was mostly Harold's idea, you know. He was just trying to prove you were never another... Sorry. She's got it now. They put me through this for 50 bucks? Yeah, well, it was mostly Harold's idea. He was just trying to prove you were never... <laughs> You're putting me through this Kiss for 50 <laughs> Now watch the scene fall apart on Debbie Allen and LL Cool J. I've known Sam for 16 years. He always looked out for me and he'll look out for them. Now you could disappoint your daughter. Yeah, man. Oh, what? Man, don't ask me. Don't even ask me. You could have done everything the way we cleavage the girl. Here's some brand new bloopers from uh, Coach, starring our old pals Craig T. Nelson and Jerry Van Dyke. Starting with the scene where Jerry is supposed to say, why would I put three skis in the ski rack and leave the fourth one lying on the ground? That means you forgot to put it in the ski rack. Why would I put three skis in the ski rack and leave the third one laying there on the ground? <laughs> the third one? I'm sorry, what? Get the line again, Jerry. Why would I let put three skates in the ski rack and leave the third one laying there on the ground? He did it again. Settle? Settle? Why would I put three skates in the ski rack? Action. Why would I put three skates in the ski rack and leave the third one laying there on the ground? Jerry's got a math problem. Can I? May I? Hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. Oh, no, you can't. All right. Come here. No, I'm ready. Go ahead. I just guy. need a moment to get back yeah. into it. Back. <laughs> Action. Why would I put the third... Why would I put three... Earl promised me that money before he died. After he died. <laughs> when did he promise me the money? Before he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dabner yeah. have to be. Yeah. I'm not sure I believe all that bunk about male menopause. I mean, I, I'm not even sure whether it exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm sorry for me. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe all that bunk about male pedophiles. <laughs> Coming up, don't go away. Coming up, all-star bloopers from Caroline in the City, featuring Leah Thompson. And Burt Reynolds takes a mud bath. The makers of children. A window is a very important part of any set. It uh, shows the viewers the outside world, it provides a natural source of light, and the writers will very often use it as a part of their script. Now, take this scene from Caroline in the City. Now, the script calls for actress Amy Peets to uh, toss a pear out of the window. Take a look. Now, there's Leah Thompson, and we'll see Amy in just a moment. Thanks, I haven't had quite enough rejection for today. Caroline, don't give up. You could, you could toss a pear out the window and hit a terrific guy. Yeah, right. Oh, you don't believe me? No. Oh! <laughs> Actor Jim Burns is supposed to break this window with his cane. <laughs> That's either a very strong window or a very weak cane. It does take a beating, doesn't it? <laughs> Now he's really going to whack it. Watch. The military should know about this glass. All you need to do is cut open a medium-sized pumpkin and clean it. I hear some more trouble with props. You like we chose gold, of course. We even painted a few fall leaves. To act I didn't do it. Then. You were getting colonics. <laughs> That's right. And boy, do I wish somebody had told me what that meant. Now here comes a very special bubble effect well, for the mud. Watch. You boys better find your. <laughs> Tell me what that meant. That wouldn't have happened. Now, Bert Reynolds is going to try and recover, but Michael Jeter has, he's really yeah, lost well. it. <laughs> well, uh, you go on. Swimmy, what is that? Uh, let me just get that line exactly. Huh? I wish they told me what that was before I signed up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, what Bert wants Michael to do is repeat the line. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's gone. <laughs> You're gonna give me a call? I'm gonna try. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say my line. Okay. Boy, I wish somebody had told me what that was before I signed up. Now, uh, here's a blooper featuring two of America's most famous chefs, Julia Child and the galloping gourmet Graham Kerr. Now, we all know these people can create uh, magnificent meals, but they also seem to know how to serve up some delicious ad libs. Standing well away. <laughs> there, and in it comes. That looks pretty nice. Now you see... That th looks very nice. Doesn't it? It's got sort of a Dijon mustard color. So now that's a very hot, spicy sauce. Mmm. Whoa! <laughs> what happened? Well, there's all of that garlic. You really would go on a little farther. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> for no. an Englishman, I think I've just been violated. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know it was that easy. They are most active early and late around the cypress trees on both plastic worms and white spinner. But... 
Here's something that's happened to all of us. You know, you take a drink out of a bottle that contains a carbonated beverage, and if it's a little too warm or somebody's shaking it up or whatever, the foam rushes up to the top, and that's exactly what happened in this scene to soap star Hillary Smith. This is true. Maybe just stressed out. That might be a good idea. She's just about to take a drink. Oops. He's trying to save the scene. That's a nice try, Hillary. Crazy, stressed out. Looks like the opening to our show. I think it worked. Now, as this show has proven time and time again, to air is human. And when you add animal to that mix, anything can happen. Now, watch this comedy scene featuring Howie Mandel as sort of a, a Jack Hanna type animal expert. Lana is a long-haired tabby. That's a cat. Here is Lana. She's a long-haired tabby. And she has been with us for a while. And she has all her shots. And she has been spayed. And here she is. Isn't she beautiful? And she's going to, she is going to be... Destroyed tomorrow morning. Oh, she's Giraffes is a couple of hundred yards away. Let's try it again. Oh! Are you rolling? Give me the rooster. All right. Uh. a dollar a day to feed the ostrich and within that's her microphone cord that's being pulled <laughs> hey. there's a baby ostrich on that woman's lap oh he just went to the bathroom on me <laughs> this is live tv mm -hmm. and it certainly is live let's take a look come on over here with me so uh, tell me who we have now mike uh, mike singleton and don hall Don, what do we got here? What are we looking at now? We have a very nice trout. We got two. We got a gold trout. Oh, uh, there it is. There's the trout. Oh, there's the other trout. Get it back here. Well, there goes the trout. <laughs> there goes the trout. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen some emotional pleas for phone calls during uh, telethons, but here's a woman who really gets all choked up. Give us a call right now and let us know that this is the type of thing. <laughs> That's a giant python wrapped around her neck, but yes, she keeps yes. talking. Oh. What do you see on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call right now and pledge your support. Thank you. <laughs> now listen to the change in her voice once they get that snake off. <laughs> Coming up in a moment is... Spirit of Colorado. Hey, we got a lot more. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Coming up, bloopers with Sandra Bernhard. And they watch nice bloopers featuring David Hasselhoff like you've never seen him in seven. Tonight at 11. You know, um, sometimes you're not exactly sure why people break up in a scene. For example, uh, in this outtake, actress Hillary Smith was looking right at actor Philip Carey, who's wearing eyeglasses. Now, maybe it was the way the light hit the glasses, uh, but it made it look to Hillary like he was crossing his eyes. Now, Philip maybe was, maybe was. He said, no, I wasn't, I wasn't. You make up your own mind. You be the judge. Look at this thing. Was he doing it to her or what? It's a funny piece. Take a look. Nora, you cannot sit in the fence. You must choose. <laughs> He swears he's crossing his eyes right now. You cannot sit in the fence. You must... <laughs> he's still laughing from the last take. 
Chris, I'm so innocent. Why, why, I can go. I don't care what they do. Give her a five. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You do you please. <laughs> Nora, honey, you cannot sit on the fence. You must choose Liz McNamara and her blue blood or Buchanan flesh and blood. This next blooper happened on the set of uh, the show Real Wild Cinema, starring Sandra Bernhardt. Now, during the rehearsal, Sandra did her lines while a makeup man was touching her up, and somebody thought it was, you know, kind of an interesting look, so they asked the makeup man to be a part of the actual scene. Now, the problem was, nobody knew that the makeup man was completely camera shy. It made him very nervous, which in turn caused a lot of nervous laughter. Watch. Hi, folks. Sandra Bernhardt here. <laughs> Look at the Join makeup me. man. There he goes. Together we will be screening films that many of you ha may have missed the first time around. And I'm not talking about Ben-Hur, Chariots of Fire, or Dances with Wolves. I'm talking about a group of obscure... <laughs> <fi> <laughs> I just turn my makeup artist off the set. Come on, honey. <laughs> Hi, folks. There Sandra he goes Bernhard again. Here. Join me in one minute. Together we will be screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, folks. Sandra Bernhard here. Join me in one minute. Together we that will be screaming. That looks like he's got it together. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra's gone, too. <laughs> <laughs> now they finally came up with a solution. In the next take, the makeup man will exit. Sandra Bernhardt here. Join me in one minute. Together we will be screening films that many of you may have missed. Oh, <laughs> Stephen, come back. We got to do it again. Oh. Pictures out of Iowa. If you're in Waterloo, this is what it looks like. Now, you're about like. to see that the weatherman is obviously looking at this tape for the first time. It was just a, just a miserable day in, uh, in Iowa. Okay, this is why, because there's a jet stream pulling cool air down from the north and here in the southeast. We've got some pretty big storms. And uh, again, this jet stream is going to be very critical in the forecast because it's going to be... <laughs> Well, moving down to the north, and again, it's going to be all that cool here in the Midwest. You know, when you're doing a, a movie fight, timing is everything. In order to fake being hit with a punch, an actor has to turn just, just at the right moment. Now watch David Hasselhoff trying to set up a knockout blow in this particular scene. Now that scene was from Baywatch, of course, probably the most popular show around the world these days. Now David Hasselhoff has been sending us Baywatch bloopers for, oh, years. So we asked him to do the very same thing for his latest show, Baywatch Nights. Ladies and gentlemen, visiting with us tonight through the magic of television, Mr. David Hasselhoff. Thank you. Hi, David, my friend, how are you? Hey, Dick, thanks for inviting me on the show. It is always a pleasure. Now tell me, exactly what is the difference between Baywatch and... Baywatch Nights. On Baywatch Nights, we wear clothes. <laughs> as opposed to Baywatch Nights. Actually, the show is based um, on a real-life lifeguards during the uh, winter months. Um, there's not too many people on the beaches, so they have to take other jobs. So our characters have taken the jobs of private investigators around L.A. Uh, believe me, there's lots of action. And uh, lots of bloopers, too. Now, tell us about that practical joke you played during the, uh, it was the kiss scene. Uh, yeah, this involves Angie Harmon. Now, here's the luckiest girl in the, in the world. Angie Harmon was actually on an airplane uh, flying to Orlando for a Planet Hollywood opening, and I saw her, and I said, there's Ryan. She came in, auditioned, and she got the role. But uh, she was pretty green, and, and actually... Um, She'd never kissed anybody on camera before, so uh, she was very nervous. So we decided to do something to break the tension. Watch. And go on in. Make it a big kiss. Now, you, as you can see, she's very nervous. Uh, she gives a big kiss to this guy, but watch what happens when the camera pans off her at the end of the scene. 
and good. Wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Looks like the Olympics. <laughs> now, just like Baywatch, Baywatch Nights does uh, a lot of location shooting, right? Yeah, that's right, Dick. We work outside at least half the time, and, uh, well, that can cause problems. I want you to know I've looked at every woman in this room very carefully. It's not a room, Dave. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <Got me. laughs> now, you uh, did a show with a cute little beagle recently. Yeah, sure, he was cute to you. You didn't have to work with him. Actually, the little doggy was very cute, but all he had to do in this scene was come over to the side of the car and stay. Me? I'm, uh... Ah! Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Did David, about this next clip, uh, now, you said uh, you wear clothes on Baywatch nights, but I, I, I didn't expect to see these clothes. Oh, I, I told them not to send that clip over, but they did. <laughs> David, I can't believe that's you. What <laughs> a transformation. This is not my father's favorite clip. Here, tell us about the blooper when you were wearing that dresser. Well, uh, my character Mitch was obviously working undercover as a woman, um, dressed as a woman uh, in a um, kind of a Lacage Fall uh, transvestite bar. And it, it, the plot's a bit confusing to explain, but um, as a matter of fact, uh, everyone was confused. Come on out, Randy. Or he's a dead man. I met you, idiot. <laughs> David, I thank you for being our guest tonight, and uh, lots of good luck on Baywatch Nights. Thanks a lot, Dick. And, uh, oh, by the way, anytime you want to do a guest spot on my show, is no problem. I'm sure we have the perfect size dress. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. David Hasselhoff, ladies and gentlemen. Next, a special appearance by Tim Conway. It's amazing how many people started out on uh, local news shows. I did one for a long time in upstate New York, and our next guest actually began his career as a director of news in Cleveland, Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome journalism's gift to comedy, Tim Conway. Tim, Thank you. don't don't spoil him now. Yes, There's just a goodness. little yeah. ration it out yes. a little bit. Thank you. Everybody so much. knows about your comedic abilities and all. Tell me about this news career of yours. Well, it was a you might say checkered career uh, in Cleveland. Um, there were only three stations in Cleveland, mm -hmm. and uh, I was fired from all three. But what, so what was the problem? It, little things. Little. At least I thought they were little things. Yeah. I, I don't think that uh, station. Um, directors um, have a sense of humor, you know. Um, no, not generally. I was, I was doing promotional stuff and they gave me a shot at doing a thing for a commercial spot um, during the late news. And it was a one minute spot and the guy came in and I, his name was uh, Junkowski or something and it was going to be, he was running for uh, city council and he said, here's what I want. I want a one minute spot on television in the news and I just want one camera. Now what it was, he had a broken leg and he had a cast from his hip right down, he was just like this and he was on crutches and uh, he was kind of running on the sympathy uh, of the leg itself because uh, i don't think that he had uh, many qualifications to be this guy so i said sure yeah i said now listen one camera i don't want you cutting i want a long shot so if he had just said you know i just want to see the leg all the time i, I would have done that too but i said fine okay so he said here's what i'm gonna i'm a chair my wife i'm gonna have my dog there and my two kids he said i'll come out and I'll deliver this one minute thing. Sure, fine, okay, we're in the news, and now here is a uh, political announcement for Mr. Jaworski, right? So everybody's sitting there. He comes around the drape, and when his crutches hit like the tile floor, they went <laughs> <laughs> And he went down. 
And you? And I just stayed there on a nice long shot, you know. <laughs> and um, he was there with these things, and he kept going. <laughs> Zing, bam. And every time he got up, he'd like plant one and go. <laughs> and uh, uh, after he does all this stuff, I say, okay, now, you know, go to the news director. And he's going. <laughs> So he can't go to him, so I go, well, go to Jim in sports, and he's going. <laughs> so I, we had this lady uh, on the town with Miss Brown, and I said, well, you know, go to her. And they said, well, she wet her pants. I don't think we can. <laughs> so we have nothing to go to, and I'm just panning lights and uh, the studio and everything. And in the background, you're <laughs> this guy's still trying to get up. This is just one of your yeah, many that, triumphs. And, and and isn't that funny? Now, they fired me after that. I don't know why. Did, did you bring news bloopers with us? Uh, I believe I time? did. Yes, I did, as a matter of fact, because I'm well-versed in news. Now, this first one, this is, these are really, I enjoy these things so much, really. This first one is kind of like a little uh, corner, like, uh, on a street, and it's in front of a church. Sounds like a nice, quiet little spot, doesn't it, huh? Very yeah. picturesque. Very picturesque. Now, I, I forgot to mention it's rather well-traveled. Mm -hmm. Lots of traffic. Way too much, way too much travel here, yes. You just watch this, you'll okay. see. Uh, at the church this morning, it was interesting, just a few minutes ago, Father Nickel was to uh, uh, wed a couple, uh, but he could not just do it yesterday. the traffic being behind this guy. Uh, they were, of course, uh, got married. <laughs> and, uh, uh -oh. Excuse me. Well, you never know what's going to happen on live television. You... Now, this is Representative Robert Michael, and he's going to refer to Newt Gingrich. Well, but there were those people who I earlier on er, uh, learned had committed themselves to knit, to knew, and said, uh, <laughs> as Newt says, it'll take a while. 84-year-old yeah. Margaret Johnson still has no heat tonight. It's cold in here. That's why I'm all covered up with these two Africans. Unbelievable conditions. All the folks out there at the Hodag just sweltering under bright blue skies. There's no lakes or anything around here they can take a dump in and uh, take a dip in, actually. And we have uh, lots of uh, water to... Uh... Now, you see the guy that hopped over the fence? He's being chased by the police. And, and the dog, he is a member of the police team. He's really trained to get his man. Yes. The camera man. <laughs> Fishes has, has one person won at one time? Uh, as many, probably is up to about ten. You're kidding, ten fishes at one time. Okay, well thanks, and I guess I'm a, a lucky person tonight, uh, Fish and Tracy. Again, all the fun down here at the Festival Center at Tom McCall Waterfront Park. <laughs> did you call me Fish? Yeah, is that what you said, <laughs> Fish and Tracy? I think you did. Fish and Tracy? I think that's what you said. The uh, demands of the sport are high. You have to be strong, you have to be flexible, you have to be prepared mentally and physically. They're good gymnasts. They're the top gymnasts in Oklahoma right now. What makes them so good? This is the Santa Monica Freeway connecting Malibu to Los Angeles, to downtown Los Angeles. Now, this in one happens to be after the big earthquake in L.A. You know, now, this uh, police car is surveying downtown. the scene. And this is just a bit of the devastation right here in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> the, the officer was not hurt, by the way. No, 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 but uh, his front axle was a bit bent. Redistricting is typically done every 10 years after the census count is in, so all the supervisors have about the same amount of people per district. Turning on the lights again now. They expect the number to be 71. Now, watch 70 the background in this shot. Forcing three judges. <laughs> One problem. None of the defendants were notified. Penalties were really good. Have a great day. We'll see you, uh... Oh, man. Guy is falling. All right, Tim, before you go, I understand uh, you have some bloopers from your Dwarf home video series. Can you sort of set these up for us? Can, can I set them up yeah. for you? Yeah. Do you do anything around here at all, huh? I mean, you know, it's kind of a cushy job you got there. Just push people around here for trying to... Me, what, what, I, I, I actually could do that. Now, oh. this is... We'll take this scene from uh, Dwarf Goes Fishing. This is the way it actually appeared in the tape itself. This is the right way. Take a look at this. Now, let's yeah. get the stuff and get into the boat, all right? Well, 
I get a little nauseous in both. When they get nauseous, try looking in the mirror. <laughs> what was that? It's very clear. Get the stuff, get in the boat, let's move out. zippity do, right? No. Get to that cooler and let's get on with this thing, girl. <laughs> How do, you, how do you make that fall look so real? Well, it's uh, pretty easy. I really fell, you see. That's, that's, uh, no, now, actually, we had to do that scene quite a few times, really, because we had one of those directors, you know, that has to get it just right. So uh, take a look at this, and we'll show you how we finally got it. Scene 117, take one. Get the cooler, and let's get on with this thing, girl. Smell it. Cut. Everybody's got to help. That's the idea of fishing. Chip in, and we... Get the cooler. Let's get on the boat here. Okay. Bounce a little more when you hit. All right, get the cooler and let's get out here. We're wasting time here with all okay. that. Okay. Uh, Can you fall a little faster? Get the cooler and let's get on this thing and get on with this. We never get to see that. Okay. Come on, hit him a little harder. Get the cooler, will you? Let's get out of here. <laughs> Gotta fall faster. Take seven. This pole, we... No good. Take eight. Get to the cooler, and let's get on with it. Almost. One more. Ten. Ten, and we... Right. Get that one. it. Quick. No good. Fifteen. Do it again. Fourteen. Once more, 15, almost, 16. Well, are you going to nap or fish? Oh, how many takes did you do? Uh, 58. Yeah. But, but see, when you have a director who, who is looking for something in particular, you just have to trust him and you just, you just keep doing it until he, until he gets it. You right, know. Now, which take did he end up taking? The first one. <laughs> You're a great sport, Tim. I hope you enjoyed your visit. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Are you kidding? I mean, this has been great. I mean, uh, to be here all this time and uh, nobody whacked me on the head. No, you, know, you may consider this a safe haven. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's okay. It's all right. Tim Conway, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up, classic bloopers from the set of Laverne and Shirley. Tonight at 11. This next group of bloopers is from the classic comedy series Laverne and Shirley starring Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams. Now, as you'll see, uh, the outtakes were just as funny as the show was. And in this first scene, Laverne is supposed to say the phrase yellow-bellied and lily-livered. Watch. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Oh, right. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. I want you to act lily-livered and chicken belly just like every... <laughs> okay. I want you to act Lily Livy. <laughs> Only good for the guys waiting, okay? Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. I want you to act chicken. <laughs> That's it? Well, chicken? you know, Lily Lily. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Maybe I've got it. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You want me to act yellow bellied and lily livered? Yeah, that's it! <laughs> <laughs> In this next blooper, the script calls for Laverne to reach into Shirley's top and pull out a tissue. Watch. Come on, let's get out of here. Wipe the gook off your face. Gook oh, on my face. face. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been here said that done, Alan. You've, how many times have you done this? Oh, I can't help okay. it. Now, there's just been a physical scene where the L monogram has come off of Laverne's dress, and Shirley just handed the L back to Laverne, and for some reason or other, both actresses find this very funny. Okay, and continue on. 
know, I realized something about myself. This I stood there, toe to toe, fighting. <laughs> You know, Days of Our Lives recently celebrated its uh, 30th anniversary on NBC, and when you figure that they uh, do a show every day, Monday through Friday, that's about 7,500 episodes. No wonder, every once in a while, they have moments like this. I want us to make a baby tonight. Now there's an invitation to turn out the lights, if I ever heard one. <laughs> Let me make this as clear as I can, Dr. Francis. My wife is under the care of Dr. Stephen Royal, and we're quite happy with him. When and if we wish to involve Bay City General, you'll hear from us. Uff. Other word. Fuck him, fuck him. You want right. to know what I think changed your mind? I don't know what. A, a smile? Ever since Dixie found out that I was her half-sister, she's been shutting me out. <laughs> Up in that cabin. Your half-sister, you sweetheart. <laughs> now here's a romantic, passionate bedroom scene. Now, you just have the feeling that these two are gonna wind up on that, uh, floor. <laughs> He's double-dipping. His bags came up short right after Louisville, and it's gotten worse right up through Belmont. Triple crown season? You figure he's skimming? It's gotta be. I Me mean, time was, I'd know exactly how to deal with him. The times have changed. Don't I know it. Listen, honey. Listen, Sonny, I... <laughs> <laughs> We've got a head injury here. She may have a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> These days, there are a lot more uh, talk shows on the air than ever before, which guarantees one thing, there are more moments uh, like these than ever before. Are you a twin? Does your twin embarrass you? Maybe wear clothes that you wouldn't be caught dead in, drive a car that barely runs, live somewhere you find unthinkable, work at a job you're too embarrassed to talk about? We want to hear your story. Call us or fax us your video. Fax <laughs> us your video? <laughs> Yeah, I just like to say, uh, I just like to say to to Roberta. Um, Is that a hickey? <laughs> That's the biggest hickey I ever saw. Talk to him about it. <laughs> now here's Rush Limbaugh and his latest opponent. There's a fly flying around in here, Dick. Oh, man, it's a huge mama. <laughs> you see it? It is. Looks pregnant. <laughs> where is that fly? <laughs> Look at that thing. See, you thought I was making this up. Where is it? All right, watch out, you guys, because... What do you mean, trap it up? I had your ex-partner, Ed McMahon, booked on this show last night, yeah. and he wouldn't come on because Cato was on, because he felt it was tawdry. Well, no. Abso I swear to God, I, I, we begged. My Ed? Yes, your Ed. <laughs> <laughs> He's home in the bank vault, counting the ten million. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. right. Somehow the check wound up with him again. But he All said right, something I like that about you. He said, my dick? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you don't want to go anywhere. Wait till you see what's coming up next. Next, the Congressional Blooper of Honor. You know, we've had some great bloopers tonight, and I'd like to leave you with uh, one more. Now, this happened in, of all places, the United States Senate. It seems that Senator Robert Byrd had expected the Senate to meet for a vote that was obviously very, very important to him at precisely 9 a.m. sharp. I guess somehow the word uh, didn't get out. 
Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the order for the quorum call be rescinded. Without objection, so ordered. Is this a nine o'clock town or a ten o'clock town? <laughs> I'm a nine o'clock fellow in a ten o'clock town. <laughs> oh, where, oh, where? <laughs> oh, where, oh, where can he be? <laughs> With his ears cut short and his tail cut long. Oh, where, oh, where? Can he be? Now that's a song that may never win an American Music Award, but I hear it's a big hit in the congressional record. Uh, we thank you so much for watching. Hope you had fun. We'll see you the next time. For now, Dick Park. So long.